Hello everyone and good night here. Uh, I am Elohim. Uh, thank you. Welcome here again. Uh, for this episode, I bring to this amazing person that is Keldens. He's author of two books. He's a traditional witch. He's this amazing person who from two years ago started doing books, but before of that, he was writing in other projects, magazine books of other people. Uh, Keldens has a new book in the market that is available now everywhere. And all the links to him are available in the description of, the, of this video. Uh, hello, Kelvin. How are you doing? Hello, I'm great. So nice. Uh, I'm happy that we have the opportunity to, to connect here. Uh, I like to do this uh, is a way of talk good people that is not a podcast so people can see you and can have a more human perception of you. <laughs> right. So, you know, in the pictures and podcasts are just the audio and you don't see how people really react or feel because when you see that in video, people usually is more kind than in a podcast or in a picture. Mm -hmm. uh, Elden, I remember that you start writing for magazines and books years ago. You wrote for, I think that was, I have my notes here. You wrote for The Witches Alta. You wrote for the New Aradia, you wrote for some magazines, and after that, and in the process, you published with leveling books, your first book, first book that was The Croker Pack. I remember the cover, everybody sees that book in the bookstores, it's a very famous book, it's a very beautiful book, and this very living traditional witchcraft. I clearly remember that the forward of the book was made by Gemma Gary, who is very well known in this community because She's like the expert on traditional witchcraft. Tell me how was this process for you? Because to start a new book is like having first children and you did it very, very well and you have an amazing photo. How was this for you? Mm -hmm. Well, writing is always a very um, interesting process to put it simply. Um, you know, it's, both both books kind of started with like, you know, I don't really know what I'd write about. And then it's like something just kind of popped into my brain and it was like, yeah, I could write about that. And then it's like, oh yeah, this is kind of what the table of contents would look like, uh-huh. Um, and, and from there it just grows. I mean, each, both books are different. With The Crooked Path, it was, it was very, um, I think very free flowing to write because I was writing about a lot of um, my own experiences with the witch's Sabbath. It was a lot more um, research resource oriented um, as it's, you know, it contains a lot of history and folklore. So I spent a lot of time reading different texts, taking a lot of notes, um, and then weaving into that my own personal experiences as a, as a modern practitioner. Um, so it's, you know, it's, it is a fun process, but you do, you have these kind of highs and lows, um, you know, these moments of imposter syndrome or second guessing yourself. Um, and then I think you, you sort of get to a point too where you're just like, oh, I'm so sick of this thing. I just want it to be done. Like, get it away from me. But then it's like, now it's coming out and you're like, no, I don't want it to come out. I want to keep it here with me forever so that nobody can judge it and say mean things about it. Um, you know, and then, yeah, then people start to read it. And for me, that's always a little anxiety producing. Um, so it's, it's definitely a roller coaster, but it, there's a lot of good fun parts to it too. <laughs> Yes, and if I can recall this, I remember that book come, comes out starting 2020. Uh, that was a very complicated year. And now you have this new one in February of 2022, just two years later. This new book that is The Witches Sabbath is available uh, in the Leveling Hills catalog. Uh, an mm -hmm. amazing really cover. Um, you have the I don't see it here, but I think that you have the foreword of Jason Mankey. Yep. Uh, very well known in the community, everybody knows Jason. Uh, 
an exploration of history, folklore, and modern practice. I'm pretty sure that any of those words are pronounced in that way, but I'm trying, I promise. Uh, <laughs> tell me how was the process of this book and how is for you what I'm trying, what you are trying to teach in this book? Because in the first one, for what you are saying, you was more like a witch telling the story. Now you are more like an explorer on an, or an occultist researching information. So this is different. How was this process now for you? And what is exactly what you are trying to teach about it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, again, I think what was really different with writing this book is that it was a lot of research. It was a lot of more academic um, oriented work. So looking through a lot of old texts, I mean, tracking down, trying to track down as close to like primary sources as possible. So sometimes it was like scans of like old um, texts that are written in calligraphy um, and as well as kind of combing through, through books put out through academic presses. Um, so it was just, it was a lot of, it was a lot of work. I mean, both books definitely were, but I mean, this book took a lot, a lot of time. Um, and really in terms of what I'm hoping to teach within it um, is really this, this history and this folklore regarding the witch's Sabbath that I think we don't get exposed to a lot in, in modern witchcraft. Um, and I wanted to bring that kind of more into our realm, into our community, because a lot of times it's only discussed in these sort of academic spheres that not a lot of people have access to. Um, but then at the same time, bringing it back into our community, it's also how can we utilize this in our practice? How does the witches' Sabbath still exist today? How do we get there? What do we do there? What, you know, who are we encountering there and what does this mean for us? Yes, and it is refreshing uh see this from the perspective of a witch a practitioner because most of the times that you look for terms about related with the witches sabbath is dictionaries encyclopedies um the etymology dictionary um books of anthropology or history but nobody mm -hmm. sees the perspective of a witch it's like i have this similar experience that when people talk about latin culture but they have never lived in latin america so feels a little superficial because you know what they are doing, but you don't really understand why or which is the purpose behind this. And I mm -hmm. think about the book, that was the reason why I was so interested in having this talk uh, with you. Uh, let me go here more personal. Uh, I am new in this country. I don't know anything. Uh, so tell me, where do you live? And which is your favorite thing about your city? Mm -hmm. So I so I live in Minnesota, so northern United States, right, kind of in the middle. Um, and yeah, the favorite thing about the town that I live in is the nature. I live in a very um, natural location. Um, I mean, literally right outside my apartment is the river. Um, and we're right on the border between Minnesota and Wisconsin. So we're in this sort of liminal location. We're right on this border between two states. Um, and so it has a very intense magic that way. Um, but I'm someone who's always more geared towards small town living. This is the town I grew up in. Um, so it's just, it's a very innately magical place. Yes, you're talking this, and I'm very jealous. I am in New York City, and you can see the light here, and I can see the light in your window. That is amazing. It's 2 p.m., and you have all of this light around. That is very natural. And what I'm going literally uh, in synchronization with, with what you are saying, and I really like that. Because you have, you're around for a lot of natural, and it's lovely, especially when you are a witch, when you're a practitioner, when you are trying to find a place to sit down to write this book. Um, mm -hmm. Next question is, how was 2020 for you? 
2020, um, sorry, there's an ambulance going by. I also live in a very noisy location. <laughs> so I wonder where it's going. Okay, okay, it's gone. Okay, um, so yeah, I mean, like most for most people, I mean, 2020 was brutal. 2021 was also continued to be pretty brutal. Um, I mean, I think I'm lucky in a lot of ways that um, I got to continue working um, and continue working safely. Um, so I'm a mental health therapist. So I've been able to continue seeing my clients virtually. Um, so that's been really lucky that it allows me to keep working and keep helping people while also having a nice distance between us. Um, so, you know, I think I've been, I think I've been a lot um, more fortunate um, than, than others, um, but it's, I mean, it's still been hard and I think we're still, I mean, we're still living it. Um, I remember when, um, you know, we were getting to the end of 2020 and everyone was like, oh, it's going to be 2021 now, like goodbye to this last year. Everything's going to get better. And I think everything is going to get better, but I kind of thought as like, okay, well now 2021 is going to be kind of doing damage control, doing a lot of healing work, a lot of bright that shadow work. Um, and I think it, that's going to continue on even into this year. Um, so it's, you know, it's been hard, but I'm hanging in there. Thank you for that. Uh, we really appreciate the work that you are doing, the, the therapies uh, which um, grow, I think, because when you grow, when you put out this project, uh, this is not, um, how I can say, you are motivating and inspiring others. You know, I was struggling like you in the same situation than you, maybe worse, maybe with similar or better conditions, but anyway, I was struggling in the same space of time. And I take this time for myself, I, I take this time to create a project and put this project out. So one of the things that, why I support so much authors is because I see how this motivate and inspire other people to do things. When you say, you know, I was in, located in my home with, all my children and with my dog and I don't have a thing, I don't have my computer, but I sit down and I put together all of this project. You are saying to others, you can do it too. That's the reason why I really love so much our community because all of these things happen and we continue uh, together. And we are struggling, but we're struggling together. And when we come in the light, we come in the light together. And that is something awesome. Like for example, we're starting 2022 and you have this amazing book available in the market. That's gorgeous. My next question here is, uh, how do you find the path of witchcraft or how do you find magic in your life? How was your first contact with this? Mm -hmm. um, so um, kind of the, the common origin story for me is that um, it started very young. Um, I just, I was always just really interested in witches as a child. Um, and so growing up, a lot of my time was spent engaging, um, reading like fairy tales, um, books about witches. Um, I mean, typically more fiction. I, I do remember going to the library as a child and like checking out like books on witch trials. Like I'm sure at one point I had checked out um, like one of Montague Summer's books um, and didn't really have much comprehension. Um, I think I was just like more like looking at woodcuts and things. Um, so I spent a lot of time outside in the woods. Um, and that was really when I started encountering spirits. Um, and it was just, it was a nice way of just being as a child. Um, and then as I grew, I eventually discovered Wicca, um, discovering that, you know, oh my gosh, there's other people out there that are witches, um, like I'm not alone. Um, and that was just a really pivotal point in my life. So from there, it just grew. Um, my interests would evolve and change. My path would evolve and change over time. Um, but it's, 
yeah, it's just been a, it's been a process. That's really, I mean, that's really how I got started. It's just this innate curiosity as a child that just built over time. And then eventually I'd stumble into things and discover whole new worlds. How do you like more about the craft? How do you like, what do you like more about the craft? What do you like less about the craft? Mm -hmm. I think one of the things I love about witchcraft is the way that it empowers us, the way that it can build us up as people. Um, I mean, even when you look historically and in folklore, people who were accused or thought of as witches were often people who were very downtrodden, were people that society was failing in many ways. And they turned or supposedly turned to witchcraft and it became a way of harnessing power of meeting their needs. Um, you know, you could go into places too about, you know, beyond just like everyday needs is like, is this a way too for people to self actualize or to find this sort of deeper gnosis? Um, and I think that's really continues, it really continues today. I mean, we see that with, um, you know, the tumultuous political landscape here, at least, I mean, here specifically talking about America, a lot of people turning to different magical traditions, including witchcraft as a means of empowering themselves. So I really like that. I like that um, we have this sort of heritage as witches um, and we're finding these ways of building ourselves up thing that I like the least is continued sort of like witch wars. So, um, I mean, typically this is always happening online, but people just bullying each other and tearing each other down. Like, you know, you're not doing this right. That's not real witchcraft. You're garbage. Um, you know, and this happens in real life too, in different places. And, and it's not new. I mean, this is something that has been going on since the start of the modern witchcraft revival in you know the mid 20th century but and probably existed in different iterations before that um so that's what i don't like it's it's sort of like the flip side of empowering ourselves sometimes translates for other people as disempowering others um and that really stinks so that's what i would say i don't like <laughs> yeah, uh, but uh i always this topic with, with, with my friends uh, and with other witches in different talks. And I think that it's not just in the witch community, it's in all the communities, in every community that you have. I always put this example that when you are in the classroom, you always have in the same, in, in every classroom in your life, from the college, um, university, college, uh, primary school, you are always having the popular guy in the, in, in the classroom, you have the bully guy in the classroom, you have the guys who are always bullied, who are sit down uh, back in the classroom. You always have some kind of archetypes repeating themselves. And when you go to work in life, this happens again. I, I end my career in marketing and advertising. Uh, when I started working in an agency, I was the youngest publicist there. And everybody else in, in that place, this is funny, but, uh, and everybody else in, in that place was older than me. And every time that I bring to a new, any new idea for a project over the table, all of these old policies from the very old school is, in my time, this was better. This is not in this way. Do you don't know what are you talking about? This is just a uh, pretty new thing. This is just a fashion way to do it now. This is just trending in some months. This is not will be the way. And then I work in different agencies and always repeat the same thing. Sometimes you are with a very nice team of people in the same, in your same age, that happens too. And someone trying to take all the light, all the spotlight, and I do better, I know better. This always go to repeat in every community. Is, and this give us a difficult uh, homework that is try to, try to focus in your work try to continue doing your best and try to sometimes make corrections to others, but without trying to look like a bully and that is very difficult because we are in a society where everybody feels, when you tweet something that now in this age, you are not questioning something, you are giving a statement, oh, witchcraft is this and nobody can tell me contrary. When you give a statement, people feel like 
or you are wrong or you are good, but I can ask you or make you doubt about it because this is your statement and I can, if I say anything contrary, I am against you. So yeah, I am the bully. So it's a very, very complicated word, especially with social media now, because in the world that you have two or three followers, you feel like you are having influence over someone else. Uh, my next question for you is, do you have or practice any kind of divination method? Um, so in terms of divination, um, I'm pretty classic. Tarot is my go-to. Um, that's another, I mean, long kind of standing thing. I remember I got my first deck of tarot cards when I was in second grade, I believe. So however old that makes me, I'm not like, like what, eight or nine. Um, but, um, yeah, tarot is kind of my go-to. I, I like to experiment with other forms of divination from time to time. Um, one of the things that I do like to do every now and then is, um, reading with, with the egg whites. Um, so dropping the egg whites in the glass of water and then, um, getting an intense sunbeam, um, <laughs> And then over you know time, like the the egg whites suspend in the water and form images. So don't worry about the light because I am enjoying. <laughs> I, 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 I'm talking and I'm just watching the light, and I'm just thinking I will take this screenshot to promote the video because. Oh. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's my it's my halo. Exactly, it's, it's your <laughs> looking how to manifest for everybody here. Thank you. <laughs> we have a similar method to divination uh, in Latin America. We have something very similar with eggs. It will be super fun if one day we can meet in a place and try to do this and learn from each other. This will be super nice. I'm pretty sure of that. Because it's like tarot cards I learned in Latin America. And when I come here, I, I have, before coming to the United States, more of 20 years of expertise being a tarot reader. And when I come here and I find that you have so many books, so many blogs, so much information about it, and I start reading so much stuff, but my first impression in, in North America was, why do you need so many books about tarot? But I started reading, and it was so really much information that I really liked, that I really enjoyed that. I was like, oh, this is true. I never noticed that. Oh, this symbol in this card really represents this. I never noticed before in 20 years. So we are always learning. So I'm really sure that we will be super fun one day we can meet and try to do divination with X because this is super fun. And, and sometimes because I did this method with my mom in the kitchen and many times I catch things that she didn't see it. And other times I was like, no, I'm pretty sure of this. And my mom will come, oh, but if you put the glass in this way, oh, now I'm watching this. You have a reason that happened. <laughs> Kelden, I love your name, Kelden. Uh, do you remember which was your first spell and which was your first book on magic? Hmm. I, I don't know what my first spell would have been. Um, I do have, and I wish I had all of the all of the ones, um, but I only have, I think I only have three, but I have like books of you know, like journals basically of spells from when I was young. Um, so I'm sure one of them in there may be. But in terms of the first book, um, so the first sort of like modern practitioner book that I had, um, it was called the Everything Book of Witchcraft and Wicca or Maybe it was Wicca and Witchcraft. Um, it was part of a series of books. It was kind of like, um, for people who will remember, like those books where it's like, whatever subject for dummies. Um, it was kind of like a book series like that, where they had like all of these different books on different things. Um, so they had one about, about Wicca and Witchcraft. Um, and I can't remember who the author was. I know that in updated um, editions, it's been different authors. Um, so I'd have to go back and look who the author of it was for the one that I read. Um, that was probably my first 
book. Um, and then it was shortly after that that I um, got some of the more um, well-known popular ones like the Scott Cunningham, Silver Raven Wolf books. Um, so but that, yeah, that was my first one. The Everything Book of Witchcraft and Wicca. If you you could for astral projection or time magic or something, visit yourself 10 years ago, which advice would you like to give to yourself? Hmm. I think I would just, I think I would honestly, I think I would just give myself a hug and I would say, you know, believe in yourself more. It's going to be okay. Um, and then honestly, I, I would probably almost ask my younger self instead, I would say, what can you tell me? Like, what advice do you have for me? I would almost reverse the process. That, that was my next question. My next question, because it's past and future. My, my next question is related with that. It's how do you see yourself? Because now I can ask you in this moment, which is your next project? Because you just have, you just have a book now. It's like when a woman just have a child, like this woman, <laughs> like, oh, when you have the next one? I mean, I just have right. a new <laughs> book in this moment. So, uh, but how do you see yourself in the next 20 years? 30 years, for example. I think in the next 20 years, I would like to see myself living in a tiny cabin in the forest with very limited internet access. Um, and I'm just living a quiet life. Um, but in terms of like other projects, I think I have a few more tricks up my sleeve. Um, but I think it's gonna probably be a while before anything else manifests. Um, you know, kind of going back to talking about the writing process, it can be it can be brutal and it can take a lot out of you. And I'm sort of in this place right now where I'm pretty exhausted, um, and I want to spend some time cultivating myself creatively in other outlets um, and kind of work on on different things for myself before creating something um, for other people in a sort of big, broad way. I really love all of this conversation. Now you, you just turn one of my favorite people. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Kellen, for this time. Uh, thank you for, for your honesty, for your book, for your project, because uh, people don't see it in this way, maybe because I am half publicist and also I work for a publisher when I was in my country. So sometimes authors don't see themselves like we see them. Uh, when, you, when you have the personal view like me being a publicist and you see all the work of the author just translating one book, it's like, I mean, you literally pick parts of your brain Fifty one hundred years, we will find this book of Kelden. Uh, you and I probably will not be here, but these people will take the book and will be, oh, who is this Kelden? And this, they will discover the magic, they will discover the witchcraft, they will discover the past in the next year. You are from now, you are inspiring next generation. Uh, that's something that I really like about this kind of work that I really appreciate because when I was working with the publisher. Uh, years ago in my country, being the publicist, I see so many authors coming and so many voices which have, who usually have so much to say. And most of the time, they don't know the, the amazing work that they, do, that they do. Sometimes you see authors who are like, oh yeah, I wrote a couple of books, yeah, just that. But you know how much work they to sit down for months to organize one idea and have a book is a lot of work. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your honesty. Thank you for your work. Uh, if you have anything else that you want to share or say here for your followers, readers, 
family who will stalk in your feed and see the video, etc. Um, no, not at the top of my head. I would just say thank you for for making this time for me and talking with me. Always, always. I really hope that this uh, we can repeat this and one day in live first uh, in person. This will be awesome. Thank you, and for everybody who watched this, remember that all the links to my friend are below of the video in the description. His website, Facebook, every social media that you can find of him because I will stalk him for some weeks. Uh, his books, everything will be there. Uh, please stay safe, stay well, be wild, and be kind with everyone around. Uh, stay well, everybody. Bye.